Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Do you do things for the right reasons? If not, maybe our guest, Kevin Guest, can help. Kevin, welcome to our show. Thanks, Bill. It's great to be with you. And I just want our audience to know your last name is actually, it's your full name is Kevin Guest, G-U-E-S-T. So that wasn't a um, stumbling over the words. It's a little unusual that we talk about our guest being named Kevin Guest. Um, That's right. When I check into hotels, they always give me a double take. Oh, there you go. That, that should be the perfect time. Now, Kevin, yeah. you, you are a CEO, if I'm correct, of USANA Health Services. Is that right? That's correct. And you've written a book called All the Right Reasons. And that's what we want to learn from because that's what we're here for on The Secrets of Success. And you start out and you say that throughout the book, you talk about living a life in harmony. What does that mean? In harmony with what? Well, I'm a musician at heart and grew up in a small town in Montana with aspirations of being a rock star and have had... Uh, I still to this day have the opportunity to play music a lot. And so I use music as a metaphor. Uh, When you have uh, music is made up of sound waves. And when you have sound waves that are congruent, you have what's called harmony. And when you have sound waves that aren't congruent, they make what's called a dissonant sound. And our lives are very simple, very simple uh, from that perspective as it relates to harmony. When we are doing things that are congruent to our core value system, we have harmony in our lives. And when we are doing things that aren't in accordance to what our core values are, then we have dissonance in our lives. And so living a life in harmony is exactly what it means, being congruent uh, from the perspective of our core value system. And what we want is that life in harmony, so we better listen to what you have to say today, correct? (laughs) Well, yeah, you know, our values are really our North Star, the things that are most important to us and make us who we are. Many people don't take the time to even stop and think about what are my core values. And then those are the non-negotiables in life that that we always want to make sure that we're saying yes to things that support our core values. And once we've done that, then the harmony starts happening. Now, I know in going through your book, it's based on 12 principles to live our lives by. Where did these principles come from? I started off the book, uh, it actually started as a personal project. Uh, I'm now a grandfather. I have four children and six grandchildren now. And I was holding my little grandchild and thought to myself, uh, if I don't write down some of the experiences that I've had in my life, uh, it will only take a generation or two to pass and it'll be as if I never existed. And so I just started writing stories that have happened to me all the way from interaction with Ringo Starr of the Beatles to performing on the Grand Ole Opry stage to uh, running a billion dollar publicly traded company. All of these various things that have happened to me uh, and the lessons that I've learned along the way, both good and bad things and mistakes that I've made and, and successes and failures to help guide my future posterity. Uh, From those stories, then, it started morphing into a message that I thought was applicable to a greater audience. Uh, Our company, USANA, is in uh, 26 countries around the world, and we're over a billion dollars in annual sales. And so I had an instant audience uh, that was wanting to hear from me, and from that, it's blossomed into a book that's uh, being sell, sold in five languages all over the world. You know, that, that's a great idea for any of our listeners, even though our levels of success may not, certainly, uh, probably not anywhere near yours, but we have had good lives, interesting lives, and to put down for future generations just uh, some of the lessons we've learned, the solid, the not-so-solid, the funny stories, I think that's something we can all learn from. You have a lot of great stories in your book, and, and they're brief and to the point, which I think we, as a um, radio host, I like, and I think just in real life, we all like those kind. And one is the uh, sawmill story, which uh, kind of had a tragic beginning. Can you tell us about that one? Yeah, like I said, I grew up in Montana, and my father 
was a World War II veteran and uh, started working at a sawmill in Montana and eventually became owner of the sawmill after many years. Um, and when he first purchased the sawmill uh, and had mortgaged our home and everything that he could get his hands on to become the owner because the the original owner had passed away. Um, shortly after his purchase of the mill and putting our lives on the line, so to speak, um, there was a, a mill worker that was doing some welding and actually caught the mill on fire and the mill burnt down to the ground. And um, uh, it appeared to be a complete loss. My dad had inventory in the back um, that they had um, on the lot that wasn't affected by the fire, and they were able to sell that inventory. But for me, what I learned from that is observa observing my father as his son. And my dad could have been mad at the worker who started the fire. He could have fired him. He could have been upset. Um, but he chose not to be, and he chose to make uh, something very positive out of something so horrific. Uh, and they rebuilt the mill. Um, and during the time the mill was being rebuilt, they employed employed as many people as they could and helping to sell existing inventory and to do other jobs and other things. Um, but as I watched my father interact, um, it was the relationships that he had built over many, many years that came to his aid in his time of need with bankers, with suppliers, with employees, and with others. And, and an important principle of the book uh, is the Dorothy Principle, uh, which resonates with m many people, which is nothing is more important than relationships. And and uh, where the Dorothy, where Dorothy comes from in the principle is a school teacher walked into a classroom and 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 said to the kids in the class, we we're going to have a pop quiz today. And one of the questions on the quiz was, name the person who cleans your, our schoolroom and cleans the hallways in the school. And the kids laughed, thinking it was a joke, uh, and her name was Dorothy. And then the teacher taught a very valuable lesson. He said, in life, we come in contact with people that... Uh, uh, daily that we should interact with and, and have relationships with and connect to, especially in today's world where we have our noses and cell phones and other things, and build relationships. And uh, I love the quote that, that says, the true measure of a man is, some, is how, so, how you treat somebody who can do nothing for you. And so um, for me, I learned a very valuable lesson from my dad as a kid watching him and observing him in a time of crisis as to how he treated people, one, and then number two, how the relationships he had forged over many years helped him get through a very difficult time. And it's not just talking about it because I'll, I'll just remind our audience, as you said before you told us that story, your father had put everything into that mill. He had mortgaged the house. This was everything. This wasn't uh, just a side light or a little investment or we bought a few stocks and the stock market went down. Everything was there. If someone burned down my mill, I don't know if I could be as kind, as generous as your father. <laughs> but I think it's a great lesson for all of us. And to realize if someone did it like your father, we can copy it too. And, and definitely the Dorothy principle. That's one of my favorites. And I think it's going to stick with us because I just like the way that's presented with a person's name. Kevin, at this point in the show, we like to remind our listeners, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Bill Horan. Our guest today is Kevin Guest. He's the author of All the Right Reasons. And Kevin, can you tell us, one, where we can get the book, and two, is there a website where we can learn more? Yeah, uh, you can get the book on Amazon, Amazon.com, and I want to let your listeners know that all of the proceeds are being donated uh, to uh, chil the Children's Hunger Fund. Uh, I've picked two orphanages where all the children are victims of sex trafficking, and um, the goal with the book was to raise enough money for one million meals for hungry children, and uh, just this last August, we surpassed one million meals donated to hungry children through the book. So as they go and purchase the book, the money's not going to me. Uh, it's going to feed hungry children, and we're doing a lot of good with the book. And I also have a website, kevinguest.com, 
uh, which uh, has information about the book, how to get it, and uh, and also about this this great work that we're doing in helping feed the hungry children uh, in Thailand. Now, Kevin, uh, you've given us many reasons. Obviously, one lessons for ourselves, and two just to help others by getting the book. And certainly, you you've learned and are practicing the lessons you bring out in the book. I told you I love the names you give to different uh, lessons and principles. What's the piano principle? The piano principle comes from uh, my parents, actually. Um, my father, uh, they got married when my par- my dad was serving in World War II. And when he came home uh, after the war, he'd been sending all his money home to my mom as newlywed, newlyweds. And they'd saved up money to get a house. And um, they, they, in their first home, um, they spent money on a new piano because they wanted music to be in their home for their children growing up. And so my dad would actually ride his bicycle to work, and he would ride my mom to the store to shop and get groceries, and they actually purchased this piano before... Uh, they had a car and other necessities because music was so important to them and their home. And so the piano principle is when you really want something and you really want it bad enough, you'll find a way to make it happen. And that's where the name, the piano principle, comes from. But there are things in our lives where uh, we will we'll make it happen if we really, truly want it. And that's certainly true, and I think now we can at least uh, give it a name. Uh, what am I doing? I'm working on the piano principle in my life, or uh, at least in the back of our mind, know that this is where it came from. If something is a strong enough desire, going to medical school, college, uh, getting a certain job or a position with a company, if you, if our listeners follow your advice and go through the book, they're certainly on the right uh, track to get that opportunity and uh, achieve what achieve essentially their goal in life. Now, in your book, you mentioned a couple of uh, famous athletes, Michael Jordan and Michael Phelps, the Olympic swimmer. What is it about them that you admire so much and that got them a place in your book? Well, uh, many elite athletes, and I would I would guess that most elite athletes have something in them that other athletes who might even have equal talent, equal skills, don't have. Uh, I heard a great story that goes along with this whole notion of uh, Steve Young, after they just won the Super Bowl, um, went back to the 49ers uh, to clean out his locker for the season. And when he got to the facility, Jerry Rice was on the practice field running reps. And it was just after they'd won the Super Bowl. And the same is true with Michael Jordan, Michael Phelps. Uh, they were, Michael Jordan was the first in the gym and the last to leave. And um, they just went the extra mile and gave that extra little something, uh, the drive and desire. Um, it just didn't happen or fall in their lap. Now, certainly they have skills and they have body types and other things that help them get to a certain level. But to truly uh, get to greatness, it required something more in, in them than just their sheer talent and drive. And uh, we again, back to the music side of things, we see that with the Beatles. Long before they ever became famous and popular, I talk about them in the book, uh, where they played in Germany and played several shows a day and played thousands and thousands of hours before they ever made it to the Ed Sullivan show uh, and and made it big. And that's for us. We will we will do many things for many, many hours before we ever uh, reach the level of greatness. But we need to be prepared and be ready to go when the opportunity presents itself. Kevin, we want to find out more about all the right reasons, but at this point in the show, it's time for a break. I'm Bill Horan. I'm here with my guest today, Kevin Guest, who wrote the book, All the Right Reasons. And you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. We'll be right back after the break.
90.3 WHPC wants you to know that motor vehicle crashes are a leading cause of death for children ages 1 to 13, and that the fatality rate could be reduced by about half if the correct car seat were always used. Three out of four kids are not as secure in the car as they should be because their car seats are not being used correctly. By visiting safercar.gov slash the right seat, parents and caregivers can find out what the right car seat for their child's age and size is. Is. That's safercar.gov slash the right seat. Be sure you're sure. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Welcome back. You're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Bill Horan, and today I'm talking to Kevin Guest, author of All the Right Reasons. Kevin, you mention in your book that sometimes in life, the first step towards success is acting like you know what you're doing. <laughs> is that faking it, or is that one of the principles, or tell us a little more about that. Well, there is a principle. It's called the leap of faith principle that's in the book, and it's um, it's when you act with faith and take a courageous step into the unknown. Uh, sometimes that is required for us to, to be successful. I tell a story in the book about I had an opportunity uh, to film. I produced a show many years ago called Turn Up the Volume, and I uh, had an opportunity to film Gene Simmons, who is a bass player and founding member of the rock band Kiss. And at the time, he was one of the biggest rock stars in the world. And um, uh, I got the phone call to go do the interview, but I did not own any camera equipment at the time. And so I had to go borrow the equipment to do the interview. And I stayed up all night in my hotel room learning how to run this camera with the user's manual. The next morning, I was in front of the biggest rock star in the world filming a segment uh, that aired uh, all over, basically all over the world, um, and really kicked off a phase of my career uh, and ended up going around and touring with many of the most famous uh, rock stars in the world at that time. But but the point is, is I really had no business even accepting the interview because I didn't even have the camera equipment, but I found a way to get it, to get it done, and I took what I needed I needed to do to learn how. Uh, and, and so I quote my grandfather in the book, and he had a, a plaque on his desk, and it said, fake it till you make it, and go, baby, go. Um, you certainly have to be prepared, and, and certainly you have to stay up all night with the user's manual and learn and be ready when the time comes. But also it takes sometimes a leap of faith to be successful when you're stepping into the unknown. Now, you mentioned in your book uh, how people are drawn to confidence, and I've actually noticed that over the years. Sometimes I just do people watching, as they say, and I'll look at someone, I'll say, I'd like to be working with her or with him or, or you know, for their company, because they walk, they just have an air of confidence, and something kind of uh, exudes success, and I have no idea what their job is or what they're doing in life. Um how do we do this? How can we project that image that will show confidence and kind of get us moving in the right direction? Well, one way, uh, one of the principles in the book is called the Plato Principle. And a, one way to accomplish that, and, and which I strongly recommend, is to identify people you admire and then start learning valuable lessons that they have to teach you. And surround yourself with people that uh, you would aspire to be like, and 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 then consciously and very intentionally take the time to listen and to learn from them. Um, and I think it comes from su- surrounding ourselves and identifying key people that can help you along your path and that resonate with you personally. Um, and and so. Uh, Again, Ronald Reagan was famous for this. He always said, you know, he surrounded himself with much smarter people than he was when he was president of the United States, and then he would just get out of their way and let them perform and work. But he was always learning from them. And I would just want to go back and repeat for our audience, I think you called that the Plato Principle. 
uh, identifying and surrounding ourselves with people we admire, I guess, who are successful in whatever endeavor that might mean, whether it's religion, teaching, business, or the sciences, etc., and learn from them and get as much from them as we can absorb. Is, is that essentially the Plato principle? Yeah, and, and so many times people, uh, when we're around others, we listen to respond versus listen to understand. And I think it's a key element when we're around others. If we truly develop the skill of listening to understand, and and as we do that, we will inherently learn from them. And uh, people have, especially those that we admire, have many, many lessons that we could learn from them if we'll listen to understand uh, when we're around them. And I think that's truly a skill that can be developed as part of the Plato principle. Uh, when we're around those that we admire and we identify who they are, um, let's listen to understand and then learn uh, the many valuable lessons they have to teach us. Uh, Kevin, in every show, we look for at least one takeaway. You've given us a lot, but I jotted that down on my notes here because I think that's one that, as you said, we all falter in. Listen to understand, not respond. And if you can take the time to do that and what that person is saying, if, if we think they're worthy of our time to be talking to them and if they fall under the Plato principle in where we're trying to admire them and learn from them, certainly if we can learn things from them and gain from their knowledge, their experience, their worldly abilities, uh, that's moving us ahead a lot with the ball. Uh, Kevin, I'd like to let our audience also know that if you're listening to this show and saying, gee, I wish my son could hear it, my father, my brother, you can go to nccradio.org. That's nccradio.org for a podcast of the show. Just look down the line for The Secrets of Success. Look for the show, All the Right Reasons, with our guest, Kevin Guest. And Kevin, right now, would like to remind our audience also that you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Bill Horan. Our guest, as we said, is Kevin Guest. He's the author of All the Right Reasons. And Kevin, can you tell us the website once again and where we can get this book? Yeah, the book is available um, both in hardcover as well as we have a Kindle version on Amazon. Dot com And if you just go in and type in Kevin Guest or All the Right Reasons, you'll find the book there. Um, or you can go to kevinguest.com, and uh, you can, it's, you can uh, find me and the book through there. And, and Kevin, one thing I was glad to read in going through your book, you are, yourself are a big reader of personal growth books, success, uh, self-esteem books. Tell us a little bit about that. How did you come upon those? I, I'm always reading three or four different books. Uh, I really enjoy business books. I enjoy biographical um, nonfiction reading, and I also enjoy reading religious books. So I usually have a religious book I'm reading. Um, I have a book that uh, is usually a business book and uh, usually some sort of biograph biography. I travel a lot. And I try and read a book a trip is my goal. Uh, many times I accomplish that. But, uh, yeah, I do love to read. I think it's so important to expand our thinking and expand um, our, our own knowledge uh, in, in many different directions and areas of interest. And so that's what, that's what I've done, tried to do consistently throughout the years. And, uh, Kevin, I want to remind her that someone may be just tuning in. Our guest is named Kevin Guest. He is the CEO of USANA Health Services. And if he can take time to read these books, I mean, he's the CEO. How much higher is he looking to go? What does he want in life? And yet he's always looking to grow his knowledge in business books, self-help books, principles that we put out here on the secrets of success so I, I think you're telling us the message you're never too important you're never too big you're never too successful to learn more and more I, Kevin in your book you talk about um, a college exam that had only one question and I'm thinking are our listeners saying yeah that's the one I want or uh oh that might be the one I don't know but I, it's another one of those good stories that I'm going to ask you to explain yeah, I, uh, it was the first day of class, and this for me was probably 35 plus or more years ago. 
as a college student, went in and sat down in class, and it was a psychology class. And the professor walked in and wrote on the chalkboard. We used chalkboards back then, <laughs> not whiteboards, but he wrote on the board. He wrote, nothing is more important than relationships. And we went through the semester. We went through our syllabus and work materials, and uh, we came time for the final exam. And I remember studying and studying all my notes and studying everything for the final exam. And the professor walked in the class and he said, uh, class, this final exam is pass or fail. And it has one question. And he said, what did I write on the board the first day of class? <laughs> and that was the answer. And here I am 30 plus years later, and I still remember what he wrote because that is so true for me personally the most important relationship for me is with god secondly my family and then third my work and my friends um, but in that order of priority and and i always want to make sure that my relationships are clean and pure and that i'm trying to do the best to develop them in the best way possible uh, and so that's where that story came from and what happened to me as a young college student. I think that's one of those that we're all going to remember. And it's going to stay with us just as many of the principles. You have something called the Hope Diamond Principle. That that sounds uh, exciting because we all hear of the Hope Diamond. We think of this gigantic diamond. What is that about? Yeah, I, early on in my career, I was in the video production field and had a desire to create uh, intellectual property products through videos that I actually owned the rights to and re would resell. And so I had my own business, was an entrepreneur, and uh, had the idea to create a video on the gemstones of America because people would go in and out of the Smithsonian Institute and other places. Uh, the Smithsonian had millions of people that would come in and out. And I thought if I created a video that was a souvenir that told the story of the gemstones that they saw and so forth that they could take from the Smithsonian, um, then it would sell, and um, I'd get paid multiple times over for the same work that I had done. So we pitched, uh, me and a friend, uh, the Smithsonian Institute, if we could do that and have the rights to do that. They said yes, and before I knew it, I was standing in Washington, D.C., in the Smithsonian Institute in the inner vault, holding the Hope Diamond and getting my picture taken. And in the book, there's a picture of me holding the Hope Diamond. Um, but the, 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 the whole point of the Hope Diamond principle is uh, when you're prepared, uh, good things happen. But you do have to be prepared. And, and the preparation came. And so for me, um, I was prepared when we got the yes to go back to the Smithsonian and create this video. Uh, on the gemstones of America. And uh, so the Hope Diamond principle is we need to be prepared so when opportunities arise, we can seize the moment. Kevin, for all our listeners, I hope they're prepared and go out and get all the right reasons by our uh, guest today, Kevin Guest, G-U-E-S-T. Kevin, give us the website real quick. KevinGuest.com or Amazon.com. Easy. where you can find the book. Easy enough to remember. Thanks so much for all the good ideas and great principles that you've given us to live our lives by. We'd like our audience to know that you've been listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, asking you to please join us again next week at the same time when we will continue our journey to success.